Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to the Alpha for Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader. As today, we continue our leisurely exploration of the infinite void of space. Though, of course, once again, we have another level up in the queue, so let's run through that real quick. Thankfully, we're uh, getting pretty old hat at this. Most of our characters get new abilities this time, which does make it slightly more complicated than usual. But I took the liberty of looking at all our options between episodes, so I've already got a pretty good idea of what we're going with. And in the case of our veterans, I'm thinking Ready Go. Uh, it doesn't say it here. It is a somewhat expensive move. It costs three action points to trigger. But it's a pretty solid option for those turns when we don't quite know what we want to do. Uh, though I will say that hit and run was a close second. Maybe distracting shots, but for now we'll run with ready go. We have more ability slots further down the queue. Hey, Dari is pretty much the same. Though she does also have a previous level up we have to take care of. Which is a characteristic, so we'll just round out her agility. She's pretty dodge focused, so we'll just keep building on that. Though we'll also want to boost her ballistic skill at some point. Not that it really matters, I suppose. We're not using her in our active party right now. That's it for our veterans. And next we've got Abelard, our vanguard. And he's also behind a level. That's skills. We'll get to that in a second. But as for his ability... We actually have a huge amount of options here. And I'm thinking we'll go with first into battle. We already get a fair amount of mileage out of those charge abilities, so it makes sense to leverage it, especially for an area melee attacker like Abelard. Though again, I suppose it is slightly moot, given that we're not using him in our active party. But there may be cases where we have to use him for various story quests or whatnot. So it's best to be ready. That's actually something I've been warned about with Wrath of the Righteous, because uh, I've started falling behind on our level-ups with a lot of the less-used companions. And uh, apparently there will be points where we will be forced to use them, so I should really get on top of that at some point. Uh, Pascal. We're just going to focus on bolstering his offense a bit. He's a useful character. He just needs a bit more punch. Next we've got Cassia, and she's definitely more into the leadership thing, so we will pick up a strategy for her. And uh, we have some decent options here, but I'm thinking we'll go with perfect strategy, since I feel like that's the one we'll have the easiest time leveraging with Bulwark. Uh, Bulwark is, of course, our defensive stratagem. As long as we can cover at least half our party with it, We'll essentially get an extra action point, which we can then use to toss out more commands or take a pot shot. Next up, we've got Adira, our psychic assassin. And she actually has some halfway decent abilities to choose from this time. Double tap in my sights. There's some potential there. And of course, there's also some temptation to just keep stacking on her psychic powers. We already boosted her up to Psy rating 2 last time around. We could run that all the way up to 5, and that would just keep boosting the strength of her Force Lightning. Not to mention, of course, the higher our Psy rating, the more other potential powers we have access to. And some of them are pretty decent. But that said, we are an assassin. I feel like we should at least dabble in the various assassin abilities, so let's go with In My Sights. That one might make it a little easier for us to get more use out of the whole assassin mark thing. At least in theory. Which finally brings us to Heinrich, our other vanguard. And while it is tempting to also give him first into battle, an ability he could definitely make use of, given that we've often been doubling or even tripling up on his defense... I'm thinking we'll take him in a slightly different direction. We'll lean for Vanguard position instead, which grants a passive bonus to dodge and parry as long as he's more than two spaces away from any other allied characters. 
which I believe has been almost every turn in the last couple of fights we had him in. And that's it. That's it for our level ups. Five minutes, not bad. Not 100% confident on all our choices there, but this is just the alpha, so we'll give it a shot, see how it works out for us. Learn for the full series. All right, next up. We actually need to head back to Foulstone. Let's just go ahead and establish our new routes real quick. But we're actually headed back towards Trinitos. Oh, uh, or we're doing this. Lord Captain, I bring dire news. A feud has broken out between the clans that maintain the Void Shield arrays. Rumor has it that the late Lady Theodora was seen on the lower decks. And so one of the families called for a rebellion against the usurper of the Void Ship. That is... you. So far, no one believes their mad tales. But unrest has begun at the fringes of the compartments. The ship's guards are ready to eliminate the instigating clan, or pacify the entire Void Shield crew. The decision is yours. Oh wow, we got some pretty quick escalation in those uh, ghost sightings. I wonder if that would have still happened even if we hadn't asked her about rumors. Find the source of the rumors and punish those responsible. I don't want any unnecessary deaths. Lord Captain, as Seneschal Worsurian would say, there are no innocents in such cases. The clans are endangering the entire void ship, tussling over a strange and obviously false rumor. If you so desire, I will convey your wishes to the guards later. But right now, the unrest must be stopped, and the people return to their direct duties or replaced. Very well, Voxmaster. I will trust your judgment. It just feels wasteful to slaughter a crew that may still serve some purpose. Destroy the rebellious clan and find a replacement among the neighboring crews. I'll see to it, Lord Captain. And I guess we'll wait and see how that turns out. Alright, so we are headed back to Foulstone because it turns out that we should now be able to initiate our first colony project. Which, for better or worse, we can only actually do from the planet interface. Yeah, yeah, see? It's not empty now. I don't know why it was the first time around, but maybe this stuff would have appeared if we had just exited and re-entered the... Uh, the interface. But we now have three options. They are all mutually exclusive. So let's have a look at our options here. See what kind of returns we can get on our initial investment. For St. Drusus. The powerful influential cult of St. Drusus is willing to take the young abode of faith under its wing. However, the Order of the Hammer accepts these gifts with caution. Wary of the figure of Drusus eclipsing their own patron saint, Cognatius in the hearts of their flock. That would net us plus seven profit factor. A unique flamethrower, the Infernical. Oh wow, look at that penetration. Though at a glance, I'm noticing this doesn't inflict status effects. No, no burning, no, uh, no debuffs. And then plus five contentment. What does that actually do? Ah, I see, a stacking 10% bonus on Profit Factor. So that would essentially be a plus 50% to the Profit Factor, which so it would be 7 plus 50%, uh, 10.5. Not sure if that's rounded. And then Efficiency boosts Resource Production, okay. And Security is self-explanatory. That's, that's to help counteract negative events. Uh, aside from that, we have the High Throne. The Ecclesiarchy lacks a capital in the Coronis Expanse from which to guide the faithful. If Foulstone ascends to the status of a cardinal world, the Adeptus Ministorum will ensure the prosperity of their new planetary stronghold. Heretics will tremble when they hear of the alliance between House Valencius and the Ecclesiarchy. 
which would grant us a new ship feature. Interesting. Emperor's Retribution. Not to mention, of course, the usual plus seven profit factor, and then a flat plus three on all three planet stats. Contentment, efficiency, and security. No hint at what the uh, Emperor's Retribution actually does. And our final option is... A Celestial Protector. No one in the entire Coronis Expanse will make a worthier guardian of a sanctuary of faith than the head of House Von Valencius. A marvelous basilica will be erected in his honor in the world's capital city. It will be decorated with a grand twin statue of the Emperor and the rogue trader. Thousands of parishioners and priests will say his name in their daily prayers and bring him reverent gifts. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that one probably sounds like our style. Once again, profit factor plus seven. That just seems to be a constant in all three options. And a shield of faith. And again, no real details on what it does, but I'm going to guess that's defensive as opposed to the other one, which is likely offensive. And we get a flat plus six contentment, which right off the bat there is immediately better than the one we get from St. Drusus. That was just plus five. Though instead of a flamethrower, we get some basic cargo. From a sheer number standpoint, I'd say the High Throne is probably our better bet. But I think there's a lot to be said for Celestial Protector just jiving more with, with how we've been running our trader. So what the heck, we'll go with that one. We did just become a rogue trader after all. We might as well flex a little. Oh, and look at that. We've immediately got a whole boatload of other projects to pursue. Oh, I see. We can't actually start any of these just yet. It's just a list of all of our potential future projects. All the way up to Tier 3, which may or may not be our maximum. Right, right. And we can clearly see there's some sort of progress bar next to Celestial Protector. So that implies we have to wait a certain amount of time for it to finish. Unless... Okay, no, I figured it was worth a shot. No, no, we do have to apparently wait, which is fine. Because it turns out we can actually monitor our projects remotely. We just can't control them without actually being here. There is actually a tab off on the right side here, which will allow us to monitor our colonies. Just for whatever reason, we can't we can't remotely control them. That said, we'll just give it time. Let's push on to System Speculo, shall we? Of course, this is a slightly more dangerous route to approach Speculo from. But not nearly as dangerous as heading for Cradle of Kepri. That'll be... interesting. Oh, and immediate trouble. Lord Captain, we have an emergency. We have received word that there has been a sighting on the lower decks. The Voxmaster's voice breaks. A sighting of Lady Theodora. The messages we have received are incomplete and vague, little more than yelling and hysterical claims. There are reports of casualties and unrest. The compartment in question has already been sealed off, but I thought you might want to look into what's going on for yourself. The situation is delicate and, what's especially disturbing, there are mentions of a Adira Tlas being present at the scene. What is Adira doing there? Adira broke her microbead, so I wasn't able to find out anything from her. But, Lord Captain, Adira is a psyker, and we are in the warp. You are the only one who would risk setting foot in that compartment. And if you do not, if you do not, we will never see Adira again. I beg you, Lord Captain, do not ignore this matter. 
I'll deal with it personally. I need the exact location. Right away, Lord Captain. And we're going in. Minus Adira. Which means Abelard's back in. Welcome back, Abelard. That was quick. Guess it's a good thing we just ran through his level ups. One moment. Let me just make sure Abelard's actually equipped for this. I may have uh, cannibalized some of his gear. Cloak of Hatred. Plus one MP, extra AP regen. Sure. The minus three health hurts, but not enough to really make a big difference here. Plus ten Medicaid. I thought I equipped that on someone. Hmm. Okay, that's the ring slot. We'll toss that to Pascal. He's got our highest Medicaid. And that is, of course, a fairly vital skill. That's the one that determines how much we heal after each fight. And we've also got the Chartist Monocle. We'll toss that to Abelard while he's in the party. That'll bump him up to Commerce 60, which is highest in the party. Yeah, I think that's it. The rest of his gear is serviceable. Let's tap that quick save button and go face some ghosts. Oh, hi. That was quick. My success is irrefutable, Sir Dick. The instrument terminal, an important part of the compartment's internal infrastructure, appears to be in working order. It's about time. Whoa, guys, hold on. <laughs> the cogitators regularly display reports on the screens. Endless chains of symbols, many of which only high-ranking tech priests can likely understand. Okay, so nothing useful. I was really hoping we'd get some clues before we confront whatever this thing is. Ah, corpses. Always a good sign. All right, here we go. And who now deigns to grace us with their presence? Another gaggle of heretics and traitors thirsting to get their due for what they've done? Or is it the leader himself, who has finally grown tired of hiding behind others? The Adora von Valancius is before you, and she looks grotesque. A hole yawns wide in her chest. Rusted hooks protrude from beneath her skin, and a lumpen, inflamed scar cuts across her throat. The figure flickers as though it is dropping in and out of this reality. She looks at you with the whitish eyes of a corpse, and smiles venomously. Rogue trader, we meet at last! I had grown tired of waiting for you to pay me a visit. The Adora's gaze is appraising and her mocking tone turns to one of distaste. Indeed, centuries of selfless toil and effort, and everything I left behind is gone to this non-entity. No, how can this be? You're dead. Sister Argenta pales and stumbles back from the ghost. Then her eyes spark with fury. War pollution! Be gone! Argenta, my dear, there's no need to make such a fuss. Why don't we sit down over a cup of recap like we used to? I'll listen to your rapturous tales of sacred relics, portents, and your special path. You must have been so lonely without me here. No one else is willing to listen to your ravings, or help you with your childish treasure hunts. Theodora laughs melodiously, almost without mockery. At the sight of the terrifying Theodora, Abelard's face turns sickly pale. Thrones spare us from the cursed apparitions of the archenemy! 
Is that what you are truly praying for? I can hear how fast your heart is pounding, Rosarian. I think deep down you hope this apparition never ends. Enough. What are you? Theodora's lips curl in a malevolent smile. What, you ask? You dare say that to me, little boy. I am Theodora von Valencius Massimo of Scaris, rogue trader of the Imperium and commander of this void ship. Alas, my glorious voyage through life was ended in the dullest possible way. By death. A nuisance I staved off as long as I could. But do not weep for me, my boy. I am still keeping an eye on my property. And punishing all those who failed me. Theodora bears her rotten teeth in a snarl. Her laughter piercing. You are not Theodora. Theodora is dead. There is no coming back from that. I'm dead? How is that? I am no different from those who have not yet crossed the divide between reality and eternity. I see, I speak. I remember the sins you all committed against me. And for all those who failed me, I have already begun exacting my retribution. I truly am Theodora, the remnants of herself that she left behind in this world. I am an echo of her memories preserved in the minds of those who cared for her. I am the taste of tears, spilled for the unsaid and the undone. I am the terror of she who failed to turn the tide of fate, and who refuses to look truth in the face. I am as real as the human passions that bring worlds to ruin. And what could you possibly want with me, pray tell? I have done Theodora no wrong. Why are you waiting for me? Theodora wearily rolls her eyes. Matters are so dire that the pleas of one of my servants breach death's veil to reach my ears. How could I ignore such a desperate cry for help? And from my little Adira, no less. And once I appeared here, of course I had to meet the pretender who has allowed this deplorable state of affairs. If you truly are Theodora, then tell me, who really killed you? Oh, -ho. wouldn't you like to know the answer to that question? I don't even know which would be more satisfying, to give you an honest answer or leave you to languish in your ignorance. Hmm, I'll we'll see how you conduct yourself, little boy. Where's Adira? What have you done with her? Me? What have I done with Adira? Theodora laughs mockingly. All I did was turn that little mutt from the fringes into a true Imperial. I gave her toys. I cleaned up after her antics. I provided her with everything she could ever dream of. Oh, I had great plans for poor little Adira. I'm sorry we could not help you, cousin. But you do not belong here. Your time has passed. Theodora tosses her head back and laughs. The scar on her throat opens with a wet, sucking noise, curving into a horrible facsimile of a smile. He feels sorry for me. Wretched, spineless creature. No, the only one worthy of pity here is you, boy. But do not expect any. I am not here to console you. Oh, no, no. I am here to seek retribution against all who failed me. My brainless crew, my useless officers, my pathetic servants who turned their backs on their mistress in her darkest hour. And worst of all, you, my dear heir. You who have undeservedly claimed the warrant and everything else that is mine. I will drag it all to hell with me, including you. She seems nice. All right, on we go. Adira's got to be around here somewhere. I did fine. 
The lines on the screen look fuzzy, as though the cogitator's readout system or data storage has been damaged. The people's remains have been hideously mutilated. The flesh seems to have melted at the edges and is thickly coated in stinking mucus. And we've got mutants. Currently listed as non-hostile, but I imagine that is going to change. The wall lining is dented, as though someone tried to break their way out. Oh, good. Labored, stuttering growls and periodic rattling comes from beneath the casing. Combi tool. Plus five to tech use, okay. And some other miscellaneous stuff, that's cool. Let's see what slot those combi tools use. Oh, shoot. Okay. Uses the ring slot. Which I'd rather put towards Medicaid. We just... We already have a pretty good tech score anyway. And time for the inevitable slaughter. A new challenge for me. You just know something's gonna kick off a fight here. Something shifts and roils under the mutant skin. I think those are called muscles. The mutants are wearing defaced but still recognizable void suits. Those typically worn by technomats in the ship's operational sections. A huge shell ready to be loaded into the macro cannon breach. Oh my. <laughs> That is a sizable projectile. Only darkness can be seen in the open breach of the macro cannon. This place seems nice. Where is she? I clearly remember her being around here somewhere. Adira, there you are. I won't tolerate weakness. A spilled liquid, cloudy and carrying a strong chemical smell. It is the coolant used to stabilize the major cogitator systems. None shall stand in my way. Ah, there you are, my little coward. Why won't you look at your captain, Adira? It's wrong. It's all wrong. Look at her, boy. My little Adira is utterly trapped in her visions. No matter. I will allay your doubts. Lord Captain? Adira turns her head to you, but her demented gaze only rests briefly on your face before sliding away. Up close, you can see that the base of one of Adira's temple implants is blackened and melted. No, wait. Lord Captain... Lady Von Valancius? Adira raises her eyes to Theodora, who stands before her. Tears stream down Adira's cheeks. You... you came back! Theodora clucks her tongue in sympathy, reaching out to tenderly stroke Adira's hair. Poor little Adira. There, there. How could I not come? You were crying for me so desperately. Your pleas carry to the very depths of the warp itself. The smile suddenly drops from the traitor's mutilated face. Why didn't you save me? Why didn't you warn me? Answer me, you insignificant wretch, or I'll drag the answer out of you myself. Theodora's fingers dig into Adira's scalp, meeting no resistance. Adira lets out a soul-chilling howl and tries to grab the hand, tearing into her, 
but her fingers passed through the monster's flesh. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything that could have had anything to do with you. I'm sorry, Lord Captain. I failed. Ah! Adira breaks into a strangled scream, and you feel the air around you grow rapidly colder. Argenta wordlessly swings her weapon up and aims it at Adira, who is struggling in the monster's hold. The Sister of Battle looks at her without an ounce of doubt or mercy. Argenta, stop! Argenta wrinkles her nose at your shouted command, and lowers the weapon by a few centimeters, but she does not put it away. Adira, I am your captain, not her. Listen to me and snap out of it! Adira shudders and goes limp. Then she blinks, disoriented, and looks at you. Lord Captain... Damn it! Theodora shoves the Psyker away with a low snarl. The rogue trader's body begins to change, losing its human shape. Chaos will devour you! It will devour everyone responsible for my death! Die! Die for the delectation of my lord! Ah, yes, yes, that does track. I won't heed your cries of mercy. And here we go. Here's that fight we were expecting. Alright, we've got Retcon up first. His guns aren't really much good against heavier targets, but um, they should work just fine on these guys. We'll put him on rear guard. Hopefully he can mop this up without without too much trouble. Suits my purposes. down. Demon's up next. No frame rate can contain the forces of chaos. Ow. That actually wasn't that bad. Let's get Heinrichs on the one that hasn't gone yet. Nice, nice. One down. Let's see to it. Let's hold their focus. We'll get Abelard on the big one. strength of the storm hammer is supposed to be that it punches right through armor ah you all right there adira oh um oh okay uh adira's down <laughs> And uh, that other guy just kind of fell apart. I'm not entirely sure why, but I guess I won't question it.
Hi, Ellie. How are you doing, sweetheart? Layla, nice to see you. I have a pair of calicos slowly clustering closer and closer to my screen. I think it's uh, I think it's something about the way those demons are moving. They're they're like stuttering pseudo animations. It just seems to draw their eyes. It will be done. They actually respond similarly to like claymation, like stuttering claymation, old Ray Harryhausen style stuff. It's uh, it's just something about that simulated movement that really gets their attention. Like watching a bird or something, I guess. But it's only the Calicos. Rain, Rain, Kaiser, they couldn't care less. We need to thin out the guys on the lower deck. We'll get Pascal on that. Actually, we should probably focus fire on that closer demon before it goes again. Nice. Not bad. Glad we bumped up our damage output with plasma weapons. I think our gent is stunned. All right, let's buy ourselves some room here. Nice hit. Let's circle and fire down the line. Nice, nice. And back to cover. That's about enough of that. Let's get rid of this guy. I'll put my psychic abilities to use. I won't object to it. Fantastic. Gotta say, Abelard, Heinrichs is really showing up here. sword. How is the storm hammer so awful in comparison? The emperor is on our side. All right, Abelard. Let's see if you can redeem yourself.
Not great, but we'll take it. Oh shoot, I should have hung back and area attacked. Okay, see that was actually some respectable damage. 25 on that swing. It was just something about the pink horror that he was really struggling with. Whereas Heinrichs had zero issues with it, he just chopped that thing to pieces. And it's pretty much just clean up at this point. We've got two guys down below. Uh, three guys. Plus half a demon up top. Though we are about to draw some fire. Incoming. What was that, a knife? Oh yeah, serrated knife. That's cute. Suits my purposes. Oh shoot, I triggered momentum while I was still on the revolver. But we can work with this. There we go. Which just leaves you. I need a foothold. There's no reason to get fancy with this. We win. Adira stares at you with crazed eyes while clutching the wounds on her head. At first, no sound comes out of her moving lips. Then she coughs weakly and whispers, Lord Captain, is it really you? Argenta trains her weapons on Adira and watches you closely. Yes, tis I, Lord Captain. Are you all right, Adira? Adira removes her hand from her head and tries to wipe away her tears, leaving bloody marks on her face. Then she touches her burnt-out implant, frowning. I don't know. It should be quiet, but in my head, the whispering's louder. It shouldn't be like that. This abomination claimed that you called her. Is this true? Me? Did I? Yes, Lord Captain. I, I think it was me who called her. 
I can barely remember. The voices, my old good whispers, they suddenly turned red, sharp. They started cutting, tearing, ripping me to pieces. I cried out, I called for help, and she came. Adira groans and clutches her head. Damn it, why are the voices making so much noise now? Shut up! Shut up! Adira, has anything like this ever happened to you before? Like this? Never. Well, there was something, but it was different. It wasn't as strong or as terrifying. Apparitions appeared. Mechanisms malfunctioned. The, the crew lost their minds. Adira breaks off. But Lady von Valencius knew about that. She said it was a small price to pay. An acceptable expense. No psyker is immune to it. But, but what happened here? It was just a mistake. I won't, I won't do it again. Adira stretches her lips into a helpless smile, looking past you. There will be no more mistakes, Lord Captain. Argenta grits her teeth. This is not the first time this heretic has caused the death of her crew. Do you remember the incident on the mid-deck, Adira? What did those honest souls ever do to deserve such a fate? To be turned into mutants and attack their own families? You are a monster, a heretic. If you have any humanity left in you, admit what you are. Shut up, Adira moans. Quit your preaching. You're the worst out of everyone here. Sometimes a psyker's first manifestation leads to their death, and the deaths of many others. But if a psyker possesses inordinate willpower and discipline, they can stave off their fall for some time. Adira has been alive many years already, a laudable achievement and a stroke of incredibly good fortune. But the forces of the warp will ultimately devour any psyker deprived of the Emperor's protection. The fact that these manifestations are growing more powerful is a clear sign that the end is near. This isn't the first time my cousin's ghost has plagued the lower decks. Have you called upon her before, Adira? Yes, rogue trader. I did it a couple of times when I had too much to drink. At the time, I thought I heard her voice among all the whispers in my head. The voice was so sad, so clear. I couldn't help myself. I answered. I hoped I could reach her. There. Adira bites her lip. Ever since she died, since I first heard her voice in my head, the whispers have gotten louder, clearer, harder to resist. And what exactly am I supposed to do with you now, Adira? Adira turns sharply to face you. Rogue traitor, I know after everything I've done, you have no faith in my willpower or my strength. But I can fix everything. It's just I'm not at my best, you see. But maybe we can find a way? To replace my implants, or some other remedy, a, a better one. Lady von Valencia said that such a thing could be found, if not here, then elsewhere. I just didn't need it before, but we, we just need to find it. We need to figure out where to look for it, and we'll get it. And until then, I'll keep myself on a tight leash. And what of the risk to my crew while we search for this solution? Adira swallows and straightens. I'll pull myself together, Lord Captain. The death of Lady Von Valancius knocked me for six. I'll get myself under control. No more booze, no more obscura, nothing. And I'll stop walking around the lower decks. I'll be stone cold sober. She determinedly wipes the tears and blood from her face. Interesting, interesting. They, uh... <laughs> they really wanted us to kill her. I 
want to help you, Adira. We'll see what we can do. Adira covers her face with her hands and tries to hold back her sobs. Thank you. Thank you, rogue traitor. I won't let you down. You are making a mistake, Lord Captain. Perhaps you will find something to slow the decline, but it will not stop it. Only a miracle can save Adira to last now. Adira awkwardly shakes out her stained clothing. I... I think I'd better... With your permission, Lord Captain. She sways, takes a step back, and faints. Lord Captain? The Boxmaster's shaking voice comes over the comm bead. I received a report that the shooting on the lower deck had stopped. I presume you have brought the situation under control, awaiting further instructions. The situation is resolved. Madeira still lives. Bring her to the med bay and have them see to her. You hear unconcealed relief in the Voxmaster's voice. Of course, Lord Captain. As you command. Echoes of the Past. Well, that was fascinating. Instead of regular symbols and numbers, the screens display slanted script, almost resembling handwriting in an unknown language. Follow my lead. That's probably normal. Oh, free grenades. Nice. Nothing else of note, but that's, uh, that's like two stacks of cargo. I think we've actually got enough cargo to boost rep with one of the factions at this point. We'll definitely have to schedule a trip back to football sometime soon. That said, uh, we are past time. And I believe we're pretty much done with this sidetrack. Though I will give the map another quick once over just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Clean up our inventory a bit. We've got a fair bit of uh, vendor trash stacking up. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll take care of all that off-screen bookkeeping off-screen. And uh, we will pick up here next time. As we set our sights on that sector we never quite got to. This was not what I had planned for today, but uh, it was still fascinating. It's also interesting that they... Uh, they presented us with pretty blatant options to execute at least two potential crew members now. I think both Heydari and Adira. I mean, personally, I don't know if I could ever really bring myself to just execute a companion. There are just so many story threads you'd be cutting yourself off from, even if it's a character you don't actively use. But then again, we also have Cam over in the Wrath series, so, you know, maybe take that with a grain of salt. There are always exceptions. But hey, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I am curious. See you then. Special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracoth, Egg, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Anil, Excelsior, Goatlead, James Tremay, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Farum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to support the channel, you can do so by pushing the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. 
or by checking out the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description.